When we build a startup, the app development cost is the big question every founder asks. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you why the development costs often increase during the project and what can you do about it. Hi, I'm Amory, founder and CEO at my CTO friend, where founders come to learn how to build their tech startup. And with this Startup Snack series available on both podcast and YouTube, we want to share the essential to make it easier for you to build your tech startup. And I recently got a situation which was a bit familiar to me. A founder provided some specifications to a provider on the beginning of the project, of course. And they agree on the development budget, and now they are reaching 60-70% of the development. The provider asks a relevant question about the, the authentication and the sign-in process. This point is often a bit crucial as we want to get as much information as possible from the users. And in the meantime, we have to follow all the tiny rules provided by Apple or Facebook or Google. We've already seen some big application being kicked out of, of uh, Apple Store. So if you are a startup, no need to say that they won't hesitate to turn down your app if you do not respect word by word the requirements. But that's not the topic for today. Today, I really want to come back on the reasons why almost all the startup development costs increase during the development phase and why. Often, it, it happens around 60-70% of the development. The tension between the provider and the startup founders goes often up at that time. It's due to, first, the provider who often underestimates, uh, they can underestimate the technical risks and uh, it often happens when we delegate things to a junior or to developers who never developed a specific type of application. That's why it's important to get someone who already did it in the past with similar technologies. And the second thing is that developers in general, but even more junior, often tend to underestimate the required time for something, especially if they do not split development in small chunks. And these are the two main reasons why the development budget might increase along the way due to the providers. But I have to say that most of the time, that's kind of the founder's fault if the budget increase. Yes, founders don't make it on purpose, but it often happens because of the context of the startup. Most of the time, is due to changes. Yes, because if you are a founder, you might change your mind maybe on the interface or on the logic thanks to customer's interview. Good, that's a good thing because you're going to make your product even better even before, before the launch. So you won't, you are not going to just wait, uh, order the, the software and just wait and see. You absolutely need to work to build your community, etc., etc. And that's a very good thing to increase and to improve your product ideas along the way. But if the developer on his side have to do things twice, well, it's quite normal if he charges you twice, right? And if you do interview some future customers, you might also have new ideas that pops up, which also mean more work. The last points where you might disagree maybe with your provider are about the quality. So by quality, what do I, does I, what do I mean? I mean the quality of the expected product. And by quality, I really talk about what counts, which is the customer experience. So we don't really care on the beginning if your software can handle millions and millions of users. What really counts are your customer experience. And when people do receive notifications, is it at the right time? What happens if they turned down notifications on their phone? Are you going to send them emails, maybe text message, etc.? That's really the onboarding and the, the customer experience process that is really, really important. And that's what you really need to level up during your, um, during your development. And, you know, it's not the developer's work to define that. It's on you founders because you are the one to know your customers. And most of the time, developers don't really fully understand the end users, at least not on the beginning of the project, which lead to a very bold statement. Quality in equals 
quality out. If you are clear on what you want, the developer will go straight to the point and create exactly what you asked for. If you've created some design before develop the development phase, then it will be easy for the developer to just reproduce the design in the software. And whenever someone challenges your application's logic, maybe your customers or your future customers, listen to them carefully and put yourself in the customer's shoes. Of course, don't change your mind after just one review, but if every one or several person asks for the same thing, consider it, really and review the experience, improve interactions, create new messages on your, in, in your interface. Maybe you can also use videos in your application to really explain how things work. Remember the quality of the input you will provide to your developer. We'll define the quality of the output of what your developer will provide, which, are, which is the, the product. And the quality of the product will set your customer's satisfactions. So let's be frank, you need an extra budget for almost any software development, unless if you are not a startup and if you really know word by word what you know from the day one. But as a startup, it's a good thing to save at least 20% of extra budget to handle all the new changes and ideas that you will have along the way. And same thing with the delay. Changes and new ideas increase the delay. And that's also why I often recommend to do not postpone the launch but to add more features after the initial launch. So in conclusion, if you are delegating some developments, try to be as much precise as you can with your project, one step, up, a step at a time. Don't, don't provide the specifications for the whole project, but one small part by one small part and move forward and, and try to ask for a small piece of your product first, uh, maybe an MVP or at least a, a part of a chunk of your product that you can test. And take all your developers' questions very seriously and provide precise answers that won't change later, if you can, of course. It's okay to, uh, to do not provide all the answers right away when they ask you questions. Maybe sometime take one day or two to really review your final customer's experience before asking to your developer to develop anything. Because anything that is developed twice doubles the cost of the development. And even... I know if often developers are nice and don't charge you for every little detail you change, at some point they will expect extra payments for the extra work. If you enjoy learning with us and want to see more, consider subscribing. Help us spread the word by hitting the like button or by sharing with your entrepreneur friends. And if you have any question or want to suggest a topic, feel free to comment down below. Or you can also check out our website to learn more about our program and how you can join. It.